Ahoy there makers, let's have a look at the P. Moroni Trilobot. Okay, this is my favourite robot for quite some time. So let's have a look at some of the features, let's have a look at what's in the box, let's have a look at the documentation and also some of the software, and then we'll do a bit of a demo as well. So a quick look at the features. So P. Moroni are describing this as a mid-level robot. So it has hackable headers for expansion, it's got a servo header, it has five headers for mounting breakout garden sockets which are sold separately. I've got quite a few on mine which are really fun. I've got the um, thermal camera on and one of the uh, little displays. It has two times front wheel drive and one rear caster and they're really good grip uh, wheels, uh, tyres and uh, the little N20 motors as well so really really accurate and uh, powerful. It's got front facing ultrasonic distance sensor and it has a camera mount. The camera is sold separately uh, but it has a camera mount there so you can do all sorts of really cool stuff with uh, things like face recognition. I've done a video on that recently so you can check that out too where it recognizes my face and changes the LEDs which are underneath. So it has six zones of RGB under lighting so we can have a look at that at the demo in a minute. It has four tactile buttons with LED status buttons which are programmable too and it has two times QWST quick stemmer QT connections as well uh, if you've got any of those too. So what do you get inside the box? So inside the box you get the main trial bot, top front and camera boards. It's very easy to put together as well. It has two times 110 RPM motors with pre-soldered shims on them. Uh, there is two motor cables which make it really easy and convenient. There's no additional extra wiring. You just put the uh, little connectors in. Everything's great. Uh, there's two times grippy moon buggy wheels as they describe them. One ball caster, the ultrasonic distance sensor, the, the booster header for attaching your own Pi, uh, and the USB-C power cable for connecting a power bank, which isn't included either, but they do have those on the store. Um, the associated nuts and bolts and mounting hardware too. So you, need, you do need to bring your own Pi with this. So it works on a Model 2 and up, anything with a 40-pin header really. Uh, recommend the Raspberry Pi 4 if you can get hold of them. Uh, they are coming back into stock now as well at 2022. Um, I know there has been a bit of a... a bit of a you've not been able to get hold of them <laughs> um, the raspberry pi 2 camera you'll need to provide that as well an sd card battery pack uh, and anything else that you want to add to this too so documentation wise it's really really good great set of documentation step-by-step -step instructions lots of examples in c and python as well um, and all the step-by-step -step instructions you could need. So you can build this with your family and have a load of fun putting it together. Software-wise, I mean, I'm a big fan of Python, as you probably know. All kinds of um, functions within the Trilobot class. So it makes it very, very easy for you to control and write your own programs. And there's even a game controller um, built in. So you can use something like a PlayStation uh, controller or an Xbox controller to move this around. Um, really, really easy to do. So if you want to grab that software library, if you head over to github.com slash pymoroni slash trialbot dash python, you can clone that library and then uh, get up and running with that. We'll have a play with that in a second too. There's loads of software examples as well in that uh, library that we've just downloaded. Lots of things, simple things we can try ourselves, things like movement, sensors, LED light animation, button inputs, and as I said, the PS4 and an Xbox remote control as well. Already done for you. So expansion wise, it has five I squared C breakout sockets. So there is three at the front, two at the back. Um, and you can add things like a compass and accelerometer modules. You can add um, LED, um, OLED displays. I've got the thermal camera on mine and as well as a um, air, air quality sensor, all kinds of possibilities. It's very easy to just plop straight in there. Now, one of the videos I did most recently after I reviewed this was to have a face recognition using OpenCV uh, and object detection running in real time on the Raspberry Pi 4. I was able to get it to change the color of the lights underneath when it recognized that there was a face uh, in the in the picture or not, or more than one face, it could detect multiple faces in an array. So you can do, you can use the power of AI with the onboard camera to do all kinds of really clever things. And it's much simpler than you probably think. This means it's also compatible with ROS, the robot operating system. So you can do some really quite advanced stuff with this uh, little bot. So let's have a bit of a demo uh, and have a play about with it. So I'm just gonna go over to here and I'm going to load up um, a terminal. And I've got some examples on here. So I'm actually logged into this um, uh, trial bot here. So if I just go and do an LS, I've downloaded the code. I'm in the examples folder. And if I 
choose, let's have a look, distance lights. If I do Python distance lights, you can now see if I just move this back a bit and if I also turn off the uh, overhead, that one there, you can see the lights a bit better. Now if I put my hand some distance away and start bringing my hand towards it, you can see the colours will change from green amber to red and if you look at the, the printout at the bottom of the screen you can see the actual distance that my hand is away so if I go to about that's about 15 centimeters go a bit closer to 10 and it's using the rangefinder to detect my hand there if I put the lights back on you can kind of see what's happening so that's really quite cool that's a nice simple example of how to use the rangefinder let's also have a look at some other ones so let's use the um, let's have a look, show under lighting. So let's go for Python show under lighting. So it's going to cycle through some of the colours. What I'll do, I'll turn off that overhead again so you can sort of see it a bit more, how, how vibrant these colours are. So six LED RGB zones and you can program each of the RGB LEDs to be any colour that you wish them to be. We can also do a bit of a Knight Rider thing as well. Let's try that. So I think that one is under light chaser. Let's try that. Again, let's just turn off that light. We can see what's going on there. So it's sort of chasing the LEDs round, a bit like Knight Rider kit the car. And I'm going to try something now. And I want to try this before the robot ended up like launching itself off the table. So what I'll do, I'll go to the overhead. I'm going to run the movement code. So let's just bring this up. If I go to a Python movement, before I do it, I'm going to pull the robot all the way back over here. I'm going to go to the overhead camera, just going to be slightly off screen, and then I'm going to hit return. So it's going to dive about. There we go. Phew. <laughs> that last bit that he always sort of dives off the table there. All right, let's just put him back there. Let's go back to our overhead view and let's have a look at some of the other programs we've got there as well. Um, so we can look at, let's have a see, follow straight. Let's try that one. So we'll do Python follow straight. And what this will do is I'll use the range finder to follow the distance. If I move my hand and I move it back, you can see that it's just following at that set distance, trying to keep it sort of 20 centimeters distance. The more I move my hand, then they'll just try and find something. There we go. So I can kind of push it back with my hand. Let's go to the overhead again. Just using the range finder, so that's quite a nice demonstration of how to use that. Let's just stop that code. And let's have a look what else we have. Um, let's try, let's try, I don't know, another one of the underlighting ones. So do Python get him over here again and let's do fade chaser so under light fade chaser so if I just dim the lights again you can probably see that a little bit better so the difference this time is that the lights are sort of fading in and out rather than just going on and off but if I flip this upside down you can actually see what the LEDs look like there we go so that, that little squiggle on the bottom of my trailer, by, trailer bot is from uh, Chris, who designed the trailer bot. So I wanted to get mine personalised from the uh, designer. So let's have a bit of a closer look at this. Um, let's get my camera up and um, let's go for the overhead camera fully. So you can see there the uh, the moon buggy wheels. You can see the little caster at the back. You can see the Raspberry Pi 4, which is sort of sandwiched between the two, the top and the bottom boards. That is the... Um, the thermal camera that I've got connected to mine. There's the, uh, the camera at the front and also the range finders. And these are the breakout gardens as well. So we have uh, five of them. So there's one of the, uh, the sensors. I think that's a, um, I think that's a accelerometer. You can see the X, Y, Z there, so it can sense where it is. There's some of the buttons as well. And I've got the battery pack as well. I know these are quite hard to get a hold of at the moment, so but hopefully when you come to buy yours, this will be in stock as well. And you get the little connector, which is just the right size to connect it to the Raspberry Pi. 
and this one is running off Wi-Fi, so it's completely um, disconnected from uh, any kind of wires, yet you can still control the code just by uh, going to, oops, going to a terminal and connecting to it. So I'm using uh, just an SSH console to connect to it. Um, you can just use something like VNC as well if you want to, but um, you can and run um, Thonny to do your code, you can do that too. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, short video on uh, the trial bot and what it can do. And um, hopefully you'll, you'll have a look at one of these yourself. They are really, really fun. And if you want to follow me as well, I have my own robots channel over on YouTube, just uh, youtube.com slash kevmaclear28. And I've got a whole bunch of videos on there, uh, quite a few ones on the trial bot and uh, on Python programming and just robots in general. So see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.